What's up everybody, it's your boy Marsman here, and welcome to Marsman Gaming. In this video, I discuss whether 3 for 3 Halo games are as bad as everyone says they are. How do 3 for 3 Halo games compare to Bungie Halo games? And is it possible for 3 for 3 to make a game that even comes close to the Bungie era titles? I answer all this and more, so stick around to the end. This is Marsman Gaming. Before we jump in, please make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. Ever since 3 for 3 has taken over the Halo franchise back in 2012, many fans have been very split on how they feel about Halo in this new generation. Bungie's final game of the Halo series was Halo Reach, and then they left and meant to go make the greatest game of all time. And since then, Halo fans have been weary of what would happen to their favorite Super Soldier. Halo games on the 3 for 3 seem to be pretty different from the old generation, and when you ask most fans, they'll tell you that most of the time that it's straight up bad. As a devout Halo fan myself that has been playing the game and the franchise since the age of 8, I feel as if it's my duty to investigate this question and discuss whether or not 343's Halo games are bad or possibly even good. And to do this, I need to analyze 3 for 3 era games and compare them to the Bungie titles, as well as ask some friends from the YouTube community. I'll be breaking down my analysis into the story, the multiplayer, and the art style and customization. Let's start off with the story. Bungie Air games seem to be synonymous with being perfection. From Halo 1 being the introduction, giving a basic story about you trying to save your crew from a new alien force that is trying to use a weapon to wipe out not only themselves, but the rest of the galaxy. To Halo 2 being an amazing story that not only wrote the book on character development by introducing my boy Arby, but making a story that was so compelling that it just expanded the lore of the Halo franchise. Halo 3 having one of the best endings in any video game I've ever played. Halo DST being a short story, but with some slapping music, let me tell you. Halo Reach being the Saving Private Ryan of the Halo franchise that introduces really cool characters, but one by one, you see them go, and it's pretty sad. And then we arrive to 3 for 3's Halo games. Let's look at Halo 4. Halo 4, in many cases, was trying to do what Halo CE did for the original series. Try to create an introduction with a new characters, new story, and try to create questions so that the future Halo games will have a new trilogy or a new setup for the next generation. And I honestly thought it was a pretty solid opening. They have Master Chief and Cortana, the dynamic duo, finding a new world in Requiem, and essentially this place was brand new to everyone, including the audience. Along the way, they introduce new characters that will either help in the journey or impede them along the way. From the UNSC, we have some pretty solid characters. Lasky being a good character, basically represents a loyal soldier to not only the UNSC, but to the chief. Captain Del Rio, which essentially was an arrogant captain who felt like his word was the only one that people should listen to, and as well as a new villain character as the Didact, which in my opinion was one of the most badass entrances, topping almost to the same level as Atriox back in Halo Wars 2. Master Chief Cortana had the closest relationship I think they've ever had all the way back since Halo 3. Halo 4 story was an introduction, and it created intrigue and some excitement to see what would happen next. Then that comes all crashing down with Halo 5. Halo 5 seemed to take all the good aspects of Halo 4's story, either flushed it down the toilet or wrapped it in a bag and burnt it with the trash. They tried to do what Halo 2 had done previously and introduce a new main protagonist that you would be playing as. Instead of giving us some information on who these new characters are and who they represent, they basically just say these are their names and go love them. Each character that they had introduced, except for Buck, essentially was boring, bland, and didn't give us any sort of reason to like them. What's crazy is, is that if you go back in Halo Waypoint, you can actually read up or watch videos that go into the backgrounds of every character that was introduced. So essentially, 3 for 3 is asking you to go on our website, go research all these characters, and then go play Halo 5. That's just poor character writing, and that is shame on 3 for 3. Not only that, but the story arc was basically confusing. They never actually explained how any of the things occurred in the game. On top of that, it feels that 3 for 3 was on the opposite end against their own marketing team, where the build-up to Halo 5 was so hyped. Chief was going to go AWOL. Chief and Locke were going to go mano a mano. You're basically going to have a two sides of the same story perspective. And then you get this. Bruh. The story was all over the place and Halo 5's faults 
or that they just couldn't get things together. Now let's talk about Halo Infinite. Now basically at this point in time, I was just straight up nervous about what was going to happen with Halo's story because up until this point, it didn't seem as if they were coherent on exactly what was their main goal. Because if you look at Halo 4 to Halo 5, it seemed as if they torched every character that they were trying to develop onto the next game. It felt like on the path to Halo Infinite, we didn't know what was going to happen next. However, what 343 does with Halo Infinite, I think was the smart move. Essentially what they did was they kind of condensed the story to be more about a specific event that's going on at the time. And essentially they kept you all in one location a basic story with the Master Chief and the weapon and Echo 216. Trying to go back to the originals and say, hey, Chief and his group are facing off against large odds to stop a new alien group from destroying everyone and taking over that sounds eerily similar to Halo CE. Most people agree that the open world was a great concept for Halo, the only negative part that comes with it is that there was a lack of terrains. So the thing is, Reefer 3 has shown that they can make a solid story with Halo 4 and Halo Infinite, but it feels as if their plan is not necessarily coherent. So when I look at the flaws of what 3 for 3 story games are compared to Bungie era story games, it's almost that 3 for 3 is trying to become too overzealous with what they're trying to do, and it's almost like they're outsmarting themselves in the process of writing their own stories. Let's think of it this way. Bungie era stories have a clear, coherent plan of what they're trying to have you do. Halo 1 is trying to be an introduction showing you the characters and the basic story. Halo 2 is going to expand the lore and the universe and then give you differing perspectives on the same incident that's going on. Halo 3 is the epic conclusion. ODST and Reach are just explanations or context to side stories that were happening throughout the universe. Then you get the 3 for 3 mainline story games. Halo 4 was a solid introduction with new characters with creating questions. Halo 5 didn't answer a single question created brand new ones, and deleted every progress that you made with Halo 4. Halo Infinite tries to kind of fix all the problems from Halo 5, kind of restart the process again, and creates a new set of story with new characters and a new group, and gives you questions to say, hey, what's going to happen next? If you're looking at 3 for 3's Halo games just as games, they aren't bad stories. Now, most Halo fans will tell you that Bungie era games are going to have a better story altogether. I wouldn't disagree with that statement, but at the same time, I don't think 3 for 3 story games are awful either. They've shown that they can make a good story, haven't shown that they can be consistent on making a good Halo story. For the most part, Bungie era multiplayer games have essentially centered around the idea of being an arena shooter. If you don't know what that means, essentially it's stating that you don't have loadouts, you don't have heroes, you don't have classes. Essentially, Halo is focused on building the arena around you, so you have to go on an equal plane as everyone else and go find weapons and tools to help you succeed. They're trying to focus on the golden triangle of grenades, guns, and melee. Starting out with Halo CE 2 and 3, Bungie has shown that they made a very flushed out and very good multiplayer, making Arena Shooter a premier style of game that you would want to pick up and play. Now, one thing that Bungie has gotten a lot of flack on was that Halo Reach was different than the others because they did introduce abilities into this mix and a lot of people did give them a lot of flack for that. Essentially, each map had a story that they were trying to tell. You're going to understand this by not only reading the description, but also just seeing the art style that went through for every single one. 3 for 3 era multiplayer was a little different. Each game was essentially trying to mirror the most popular multiplayer title of that time. Halo 4 was trying to mirror Black Ops by having loadouts and kill streaks. Halo 5 was trying to mirror Titanfall's hype and trying to use high speed movements in every aspect of the game. Halo Infinite, on the other hand, did something opposite. Instead of trying to follow the trends, essentially, they went back in time to try to follow Halo 3's mindset. However, based on a lot of reports, it was shown that before Joseph Staden had arrived, that Halo Infinite was trying to become a hero shooter. Here's the issue. Up to this point, 3 for 3 has not really been their own company. They were trying to follow the trends of the time rather than make their own identity. I would have more respect if they would have stuck with one identity and say, this is what we want to do with Halo from here on out. Now, most people probably wouldn't want to hear that, but essentially what it shows me is that 343 didn't know what they wanted to do with Halo, and essentially they were trying to follow the trends of that year. If you analyze 343 era maps, you can ask most Halo fans, and they'll tell you that they seem to be too cramped and not really built for movement. 
However, if you do analyze all of them, there actually are some gems that I do like a lot. For example, you get maps like Exile, Plaza, Bazaar, High Power, Streets, and others, and they're pretty solid. I think as time progressed, 3 for 3 has learned how to make solid maps, but it is kind of interesting to see that when they do recreate maps from the old generation, they actually do a better job at doing that than creating their own. However, it seems that Halo Infinite is more the outlier compared to Halo 4 and Halo 5. Now, in order to help with their process of making maps, or at least make it easier for themselves, 3 for 3 has done one thing that I think Bungie wished that they could have done as well, and that was with the implementation of Forge. Now, I understand that Forge was first introduced in Halo 3 during Bungie's time, but Forge was never necessarily used as well as it was during 3 for 3's era. Halo 5's Forge today seems like one of the biggest Forges we've ever seen to this point. And if you look at Halo Infinite's Forge, and I'm sure everyone watching this video has at least seen some cutscenes or some clips from someone making something outrageous in Halo Infinite's Forge through the leaks, it shows you that when that thing drops, it's going to be insane. When you look at the impact of Forge on previous titles, for example, Halo Reach, when they had used Forge, it had helped them so much because when that game was first launched, they too were plagued with a lack of content, especially when it came to map design. But Forge essentially helped them kind of push that multiplayer forward, and 343 is going to do the same thing that they did in Halo 5, as well as Halo Infinite. 343 took Bungie's creation and expanded it more than anyone has ever expected. When analyzing the multiplayer, I think the biggest issue that people have with 343's multiplayer essentially was that they have nostalgia back for Bungie era titles. As myself, I love Halo 3 as being my favorite multiplayer game to ever play. However, when you analyze Halo 4 and Halo 5, I don't necessarily think they were bad multiplayers, but they were also trying to chase trends of other games that just were doing it better than they were. Essentially, Halo 4 was trying to be a COD game, but it felt too much like Halo to bring in COD fans. And Halo 5 was not Titanfall. Even then, Halo 5 was one of the most populated multiplayer games since Halo 3. And the same thing can be said about Halo Infinite, especially at its launch. But one thing I can tell you is that Forge, when it does finally drop, I think it will change the landscape of what this game will look like in the future. So can 3 for 3 make a good multiplayer game? I think it can. The only downside is, is that you really need to land on the gameplay component and be able to create some maps effectively, and I think they'll be okay. Does this make 3 for 3 multiplayer bad? No. Does it succeed the original series? Also no. Now let's talk about the art style and customization. I think this portion of the video is going to show the biggest difference between 3 for 3 and Bungie. Let's look quickly at Bungie's art style. Each armor and art style piece was crafted for a specific reason and purpose. Let's give you an example. For the UNSC, armor was built to be very rigid, based on the idea that humanity was very left behind compared to new alien races that had higher level technology. However, if you compare that to the Covenant and to Forerunner tech, everything was smooth and clean and simple because it shows you that the Covenant and Forerunners were higher level in technology and just more advanced than they were. And there's a reason why you can always remember certain campaign missions or multiplayer maps because the art style that was made for each one of these was so intricate and interesting. You will always remember Guardians because of the way that it's formatted as well as the art style and the mystery that's behind it. And this goes right into the customization aspect. Like for example, you fight against the elite honor guard, you're sitting there like pissing yourself because you're like, this dude looks badass and he's got all this armor that makes him bright and shiny and decked out like he can take on anybody. When you look at 3 for 3's art style, it didn't seem as fleshed out. For example, I'm not saying that the missions of Halo 4, 5, or Infinite looked bad in their art style. I think the levels themselves were very interesting and I thought that they looked very good. The downside of the art style was essentially with the way that characters looked, the armor pieces, the way that the Covenant looked. Because if you make a comparison to let's just say the Covenant from the original Bungie series, it kind of looked like 3 for 3's Covenant army looked like they were more primitive compared to the old style Covenant. And don't even get me started on the music. I feel like there are good tracks that 3 for 3 has made, but like they don't really implement them at all. Now, if we're looking at a comparison and the, I guess you would say the flaws of 3 for 3's art design, it just feels as if they were too kind of nonchalant about making it. It feels like 3 for 3's art design, especially with the armors, was almost like, let's put a square on a circle, let's meld them together and boom, we're good to go. While Bungie art style and armors were essentially intricate and as well that goes into the music right marty o'donnell 
is a legend. I mean, he's making these music and these these songs that just really tug at your heartstrings. Am I saying that 343's art style is bad across the board? I wouldn't go that far. But I do notice that there are a lot of flaws with how they created their art style compared to Bungie's art style. It just felt like 343 was lacking what Halo fans were looking for. To show you that I'm not too far off on my train of thought, I wanted to reach out to other Halo content creators and fans to get their input on what they think about 343's era Halo games. I asked them three simple questions. One, do you think 343 Halo games are as bad as most fans say they are? Two, what do you think is the biggest flaw that 343 Halo games have compared to Bungie's Halo games? And three, do you believe that 343 can make Halo games that come close to the success of Bungie era games? No. If you're talking about the grand scheme of gaming as a whole, they're actually very good games. Because Halo has so many features that are expected by the community that every game at least is a rather fulfilled game for the most part. Obviously some are more than others. Master Chief Collection turned out to be an absolute gem of a Halo game. Just took a few years to get there. Halo 4 is certainly a divisive game and I still hold that game as the worst Halo game but out of gaming in general it's still a rather good game. You have plenty of customization and things you can do within the multiplayer, plenty of game modes, plenty of different experiences to have there. Halo 5 had the best Halo multiplayer since Halo 3 until Halo Infinite came along. The best Forge we've ever had, a custom game browser, which is a feature I've wanted in Halo since Halo 2, but the campaign certainly left a lot to be desired. Halo Infinite, while being a very basic Halo game, is certainly a very fun game. The campaign I find to be amazing, one of the best campaigns we've ever had in a Halo game, the multiplayer I still really enjoy. In Halo Infinite's the first game that we've had in the Halo franchise that everyone agrees on the gameplay since Halo 3. So now we're at the good point where people just want more Halo Infinite, which we haven't really had that between Reach and Halo 5. So when people say 343 makes bad games, that's just being hyperbolic. They might not be the best Halo games, but when compared to gaming as a whole, they check a lot of boxes to be a rather fulfilled game. Think they're as bad? No, because it seems to me like the Halo community has become a little bit toxic towards 343 and some of their products. I feel like they are like genuinely decent games, you know, aside from Halo 5. They carry the Halo moniker, which was renowned as the, the game to play, the number one game. So they're definitely better than what people say they are it's just that they have like a legacy that's almost impossible to live up to because Bungie created these groundbreaking innovative games that everybody loved do the games hold up to the standard that Bungie set not really could they ever maybe it's pretty difficult but to me they're definitely better games than what the Halo community says they are so if we take a look at Halo 4 it was their first time for 343 Industries to make an Halo game. I remember back in, you know, 2012, when this game uh, got released, literally everyone, they were quite mind blown, but at the same time, people were, were like very, very super disappointed. It's because the art style of Halo 4 was completely terrible. Like, like the storyline, the storyline was great. It was okay. It wasn't that bad, but everything else about it, the weapons, the sounds, um, it just doesn't look, look like a Halo game. It's a good game, but it doesn't look like a Halo game. That's what they've been missing, it's missing the Halo feel to it. Halo 5 just went bad to worse. Single player was like really confusing. I can't even, even remember what happened in Halo 5 campaign. All I remember was Agent Lock and Master Chief were firing. That's the only thing I remember. That's how bad Halo 5 campaign was. Uh, but the only thing I, I want to give a shot to 343 Industries is that they did a pretty good job with uh, with multiplayer with Forge. I just didn't really like what they did to Halo 5. So they, they just did like a really ter a terrible job with that. To answer your first question, I don't think they're as bad as people say. There are some great qualities in Halo 4, Halo 5 and Halo Infinite. But as majority of you would know there are separate issues in each of these games that kind of put them in a lower tier than the Bungie Halo games. For example, the campaign story in Halo 4 I quite enjoyed, but I did not enjoy the multiplayer at all. Halo 5's campaign was not great, but the multiplayer, while being quite different to the regular Halo style gameplay, was still a ton of fun and a tight experience. And Halo Infinite's campaign is actually pretty decent, but it could have been so much better if two thirds of it weren't just cut. And I personally love Halo Infinite's multiplayer, it just needs way more content. But when Forge releases and we get more content going into the game, as 
as well as a progression system and other basic features that other titles would normally have, that's when we'll start looking good. But to fully answer the question, I don't think they're as bad as people say, and I fully think Halo Infinite has been their best game so far, but with the time they had, it should have been so much better. 343 has been continually being forced to reinvent what Halo is. What I mean by that is from Halo CE to Halo Reach, it felt like it was a general evolution of the Halo franchise, more iterative rather than reinventing the wheel. Where when 343 came into developing Halo, Halo 4 was like, we need to make our own Halo game or something to make some kind of statement. People didn't like that, but they also needed to reinvent things to kind of bring some more new mechanics in. They had the boosters and thrusts and stuff like that with Halo 5, which did play out very well, but just didn't really feel like a true Halo game. And now that they've kind of went back a little bit, went more to the roots of what the core gameplay loop of Halo is, Halo Infinite has been well liked by a lot of people. So if 3 for 3 focus on being more iterative on the gameplay loop and experience of Halo, rather than reinventing everything every single time they make a new game, it would be much less stress on the team and help provide more content and things that people want to do in Halo rather than having to reinvent the wheel every single time. That's a good question. Honestly, I think it's a chasing trends type of deal over innovation, you know? when original Halo came out, it went against a lot of what people took for granted in the FPS genre. Setting the basis for every single FPS game in the future, because at the time, FPS games were mostly strictly on PC. So there was a big question mark regarding whether FPS games could work on the console. And that's that's one aspect that Bungie kind of knocked out of the park. Bungie was doing a lot of things that nobody had seen in the industry. And when you compare it to 343, it seems like they're chasing a lot of trends and they're a little bit behind. And I think a good example of that is Halo 4. You know, the multiplayer did uh, resemble Call of Duty a lot with the, uh, you know, care package drops and that type of stuff. Now you look at Halo Infinite and they're kind of copying what's the big trend these days, which is the Battle Pass type of stuff. And I think to that extent, it's a little bit of a detriment because it seems like they're paywalling or locking certain aspects of the franchise that have been staples, which, uh, you know, if it was 2007 or whatever, that would just be in the game. And a lot of gamers, a lot of Halo gamers have expected to have the, you know, the bulk of the playlist that we've almost always had in the original trilogy to be there at launch. So that creates a lot of animosity towards the developer when it feels like they're taking things that you've always had away and they're not introducing almost anything new to the game. I think 343's biggest flaw compared to the Bungie Halo games is that Halo 5 and Halo Infinite launched incomplete. Halo 4 at least had a very solid launch with everything ready to go day one, but each Halo launch after Halo 4 just had less and less content at launch, which was a massive shame and probably their biggest flaw compared to the Bungie Halo games that launched complete. The foundation of Halo 4 and Halo 5 very terrible you know as a halo fan i'm saying this right i want to say it's the worst game i would say it's the worst halo games that they have ever ever made i just didn't really like what they did to the art style you know going back to that i'm not talking about the graphics no the art style is what so when you, when you take a look at the jackals in halo 4 they look like godzilla's from uh, 1998 the jackals in halo 4 they look like the teeth were, were sticking out and they look like dinosaurs that art style is not Halo. Probably not. Though 343 games have sold well because Halo has a long history of success as a franchise for, as a whole, I don't see 343 or Halo really in that fact really being as culturally significant as it was during the Bungie era because what Bungie did with shooters on console for Halo was absolutely massive. People forget before Combat Evolved, shooters mainly were on PC. Games like Doom, Quake, and Counter-Strike dominated the FPS genre, and it was all on PC. But then when we had the dual sticks come in, that's technology upgrades, things got a lot better for us. And Bungie with Halo were kind of the first development team and game to really crack the code of what feels good as a shooter on console. Hence, the game really blew up. Kind of almost like Fortnite, where Fortnite was really the first AAA game to come into the Battle Royale sphere and absolutely dominated because they were able to have that level of polish. I can see 343 making a Halo game that's within the conversation of all the major shooters out there. They're kind of doing it with Halo Infinite, but maybe not on the right reasons. I would say for gamers, when they measure success, they probably talk about more about cultural significance and maybe Halo will always be more of a niche type of shooter, 
but it can still be very popular to hold its own population to be a franchise worth running for another 20 years. Finally, to answer the last question, I think they can, but we need to see different people in charge of the studio. I've said it before, but put Joseph Staten at the top, let him take the reins, and I think we might get to where we need to be. But I fully believe 343 can make good Halo games. There's a lot of passion from the devs, but I just think the management have been holding the franchise back. I think they can come close. I don't think they'll ever eclipse Bungie Air Games. Maybe they will, but their Bungie games were the best of the best. They were the number one game in the world. If you weren't playing Halo, I don't know what the fuck you were doing with your life, right? I think they can. I think they have a lot of talented people over there, and you can look at Halo Infinite's gameplay, the weapons, and just how it feels, because it feels like a classic Halo. The thing that's missing is just Halo 1 through 3 all came with pretty big playlists at launch, and that's become expected of a new Halo game and of the franchise to be able to play some of those. So when you take like game modes like Fiesta and you put it into a limited time mode, it really feels like they're just taking parts of the game and locking it behind a paywall. You know, like if I want to play Fiesta, I should be able to just jump in a game on a playlist and do whatever I want. I think that's the general feeling as well from a lot of players. So yeah, this is a really good question. So like I said, 343 Industries are making massive improvements. They literally built Halo Infinite foundation very very good so when you take a look at halo infinite i swear to god you know when i first time watched the halo infinite gameplay demo go about the graphics i know the graphics at that time was, was quite bad but everything else about it the art style the gameplay movements the the characters and the, the sound dialogues and it was like the super top notch i just couldn't, cannot believe how much jump they made from halo 5 and all the way to halo infinite how did they make that that massive repent from that it's mind-blowing so this gives me more hope that they can literally bring Halo back. Yes, of course, uh, Halo Infinite is just being like uh, off and on. You know, there's no content that like, you know, many people are fading away from the game. People are really disappointed about the game, not because of the of the foundation, not because of the art style. When people complain about, about Halo Infinite, what are they complain about? They complain about, about the content, not the art style or, or, or the foundation of the game. They complain about the content. There's not enough content in Halo Infinite. So do I think that 343's Halo games are as bad as everyone says? Honestly, I don't think they are. I think generally they're pretty solid games, but most people are going to compare 343's games to the Bungie era titles and are obviously going to pick apart some things. I think 343 has shown with Halo Infinite that they can make a good Halo game. The only issue they have is being consistent. Because when you're inconsistent and you land on the first game, you fail in the second game, and you have half content in the third game at launch, it seems like people are not going to be sure of what they're going to get next. And do I think that 343 can make a Halo game that can come close to Bungie era titles? I mean, it's possible, but here's the issue that 343 has. Their biggest struggle is to plan effectively and actually execute on their plan. Because I've seen good ideas come from these devs, and I've seen the talent that they have, especially when it comes to writing stories or even just having ideas when it comes to multiplayer forge and even just looking at an open world concept including a battle royale i've seen these ideas that these devs have and they're very intriguing and interesting but there's a difference between saying something and actually doing it and if three for three can land on the plans that they have in an effective way then i think they're going to make a great game but we'll only see as time progresses. Thank you everyone for watching. Please, if you haven't done so yet, hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. Please join us on social media, on Discord and Twitter, and that's located in the description below. If you want to help support the channel, please join us on our Patreon, and that is also located in the description below. Until next time, this is Marsman from Marsman Gaming, signing off. Peace. <laughs>